Hello everyone, this is what we're painting today. This is a tribute to dads for Father's Day and I really enjoyed painting this. I hope that you're going to enjoy painting it as well. Lots of fun on the background that we did. I can't wait. Let's get started. I have my um, board, which I have a 9 by 12 um, masonite <clears throat> board, and I have prepped it with two coats of black paint. And now I want to add like a distressing, aged, more male, masculine look to the background. So I put out on my palette just a little spoonful of each of these vintage wash effects. Vintage effects wash. And I have red, orange, white, and gray. And so I'm going to dampen my board here. I just got a large brush here. Lay some water down because I want it to streak down almost like it's a worn rusty piece of wood. And I'm just going to begin tipping in some of this wash. This is the gray and brushing it on just in random areas. I know it almost looks white on the camera but I promise it's gray. Okay, I'm just going to wipe my brush off and go into some orange. wipe my brush off. Actually, I think I'll rinse it off for the white. And you can apply this as many times as you want. I think I'll add a little bit more of that orange in there. Wash my brush out. Now I'm just going to go back and forth across my surface like this and gently brush that. I might come back with my black and fill in a little bit. <clears throat> I want it to be a little bit more washed out than that. I want full, full strokes across the whole thing here. And I think while I have this, I'm going to wash out my brush. It's got some water in it. And I'm going to tap. Maybe not that much. See if it's the paint still wet enough. It will start separating that paint a little bit. Give it a little bit of distressed look. It's giving it a little, just a touch of distress look. But your paint has to be wet. It won't, it won't do it if your paint's not wet. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry. And then I think I'll come back and just kind of dry brush some black back into it. Okay, I've decided to take a dry sponge. This is just a piece of foam sponge. I sell this in, um, on my website. And um, I'm, going, I'm tapping back over where I tapped all the water and I'm removing because I liked this look a little bit better really looks old I'll still add some distressing on here on top of this I think but uh, where that water spattered on here as I 
tap on here with my sponge, it's removing the paint just in those areas. And I think that is such a cool, cool effect. Oh yeah, I'm really liking that a lot. Okay, let's get it dry. Okay, it's not quite dry, but I went ahead and marked off every two inches a line. So we're going to make this look like some wood on here. And we're going to take some... I've got black and graphite out on my palette. So I'm just going to mix a little bit of black in with the graphite just so it darkens it a little bit. I don't want it to be quite black. Black is a little bit too harsh, I think. So we're just going to start painting in a board separation here. And it doesn't have to be straight or perfect. You can push down, make like a big old knot hole in it. These boards are old and worn out. Just mix as I need some. I don't worry about mixing a whole bunch up. Let's make that just maybe a tad bit fatter. I'm using a four round. Just continue on right here with each board. I think we'll have a pretty limited palette with this project. We're going to take some of this color when we're done making our wood sections here and I think we'll just kind of dry brush some of it into our background. And it could probably have a little bit more black added into it as we put it into the background here. A bigger brush. I'm just going to get an old flat brush here. And I'm going to dampen it. This is a size 16 or half inch flat would be fine. So again, I'm just going to mix some of that black in with that gray. I'm going to offload a little bit onto my paper towel. And then I just want to kind of just brush some of this through here, create some darker areas. Just kind of letting the brush skim across here. When you reload your brush, make sure you offload a little bit of it onto your paper towel. So when you go straight to your surface, you're not laying down a bold, dark amount of paint. And you can give more pressure on the brush as you need more pressure, more paint to come off of your brush. It's just a tickling when you first start on the very tips of the brush. And then as your brush feels like it's running out of paint, you can give a little bit more pressure on there and apply okay I think I'll take some of that um, whitewash in my brush and maybe put a little bit ooh, or a lot of that on here A 
load and slightly offload. just a tiny bit more of the rust because I feel like we lost a little bit there but it's your background if you get to a point where you like it then you can stop touches of it. It looks brighter in front of me than it does on the camera, so... Alright, let's create a few little cracks in our boards here. We'll go back to that graphite and black mix. And on our edges here, we'll just kind of Come down with some, maybe some fat little cracks that really come down quite a bit. And just thin your paint down with a little bit of water as you need to. has formed in the boards maybe you know I mean they're they're old they're starting to shrink or split out or so we can make some of those cracks in the board itself I'm still just using this round brush staying up on that very tip of it so we'll do this all the way across I would not overdo this. We're going to be putting our pattern on here, so a lot of this will be covered up. But we want to have a little bit of stuff going on with our boards here. Like this one could have a really big crack in the bottom of it. Don't really want them both to be the same length, so since this is a bigger crack, I'll pull it up into the wood a little bit farther. Okay, I'm going to do one more board. Then I'll go off camera and finish the rest of them because it will all be the same, just a little bit repetitive. And we don't want to fill our video with stuff that we're just repeating over and over and over. I'm just lifting it up so you can see it since there's a little bit of glare on it. And I think we'll create some... This is kind of there. Maybe one down here. Okay. 
Okay, so this is going to go on the last three boards. I'll go finish that. And like I said, don't overdo it. We don't want uh, so much on here that, um, you know, it gets too much in the background. So I've got all of my black in there. So I'm going to take a little bit of that whitewash since that's what's on my palette. Or you could use just plain white paint. And I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight next to some of these. Now you could go down to a detail liner here if you want. Or if you're using a round like me, stay up on the tip. Now I'm not going to do every part of it. I'm just going to create a little bit of stuff that kind of comes, um, is getting more light on it. I think I might mix a little bit of that gray in with that white so it's not quite so stark. That's the um, the gray vintage effects. But if you don't have that, you can use uh, gray sky. Um, so you can use gray sky and burnt orange for this if you don't have it, and gray sky for this one. And it may not be as vibrant a color. You might have to do it a couple of times, but you can get the effect. I'm mostly just tipping into that gray now on my brush. And you don't have to do every place, like I said. Just let's just do some hit and miss kind of things. water to my paint here so it flows off my brush a little bit easier I'd have just a tad too much water now this is dry we'll be ready to add our pattern on because I think this will complete our background nicely places that have the bigger holes I definitely want to you know add a little highlight on them to make it look like those big cracks have been there a while and the wood is very very dry next to that crack Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I think we're going to leave our background right there and get it dry and get our pattern transferred on. Okay, I want to add another color in my background real quick and I'm going to add some desert turquoise because I'm going to put a little bit of this in our design. I want to bring a little bit of it out here into the background, so just a little bit. I've just got a little bit of my brush, it's a slightly damp brush, just tickling it here and there. That's pretty dark. This you can add into the background when you're doing your background and then when you spatter your water on there it will have that same effect. But I didn't think about adding this until after I put my pattern lines on. I'm like, oh yeah, I do want to add some of that color in the background. So just 
just a little bit. Okay, I think that'll probably do it for adding a little bit of that turquoise in there. Okay, so all my pattern, my just basic lines are on here. No details or anything yet. Um, over here in this corner, we're going to put this saying. Now, you can just transfer the words on there and write them in with a identipen. This one has a dual tip, a fat tip, which would be great for this. And then it's got a fine tip, like for these little swirlies here in these letters. But if you have a laser printer or can take the lettering and have it printed onto a piece of cardstock with a laser printer. Um, that's what I did. I printed it off on my laser printer. So now I, I just want to tear the edges. Away. age this paper. Now you can age the paper any way that you like with inks or with paints. I'm going to do it with some paints. Um, it, I was originally going to do this on some some watercolor paper and then I might still get a piece of watercolor paper because I'll be able to move the paint more on there on watercolor paper. So I just want it tore out kind of like that. So I'm going to work on aging this. So I'm just going to take my um, old brush, which I have a 16 here or half inch, um, whatever uh, brush that you have that you like. And I'm going to try dampening this paper and see how well it does. Because I printed with a laser printer the water will not make the ink um, have any issues. So I'm going to put some of this rusty color on here. And I think I'll do some of the turquoise. gray. I think the black would be too much. We could probably take some of the black and put it around the edges. I think I would like to wash a little bit of black in there. And I'm going to make it extremely sheer by adding a lot of water to it and make it just a wash offload onto my paper towel so I don't have tons of this on here. I'm going to start by putting it on the edges. streak a little bit of it down on my paper starting to not like this this water so I'll just dirty 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 it up I don't want to see a whole lot of that white peeking through there because I want it to look old like um our project is. Now I'm just, I cleaned my brush and I'm just going to side load some of that black. Now I'm going to wipe my paper towel so I can get the excess water out of my brush. And I'm just going to come in here and do kind of a hit and miss on the edges. And 
some places it might uh, pick up a little more paint than other places and that's perfectly fine. A little bit more water and I'm going to streak a little bit more of this black through here. Okay, I think that ages that up very nicely. And like I said, maybe a piece of watercolor paper would be better, which is what I intended to use, but I didn't. So we're going to adhere this on here when we are done. So I'm going to put this aside so it can get completely dry. Okay, I'm all dry here. I have base coated my boots in with graphite. Um, just the regular acrylic paint here. And transferred on some of my uh, lines here. So we're going to get ready to work on the boots here. Now we're going to be doing some floating, some shading and highlighting. And I want you to use whatever brush um, that you like to use. Whatever favorite brush that you use. Um, here's some of the best options for floating when you are doing your float work. Um, this is a 3 8 inch angle brush. It's for very large areas, but you can load just a little bit on this brush. You can use this brush for so many different sizes of, where you, of floats because you can load just a little bit on there or a little bit more to make a wider float. So it's a great versatile brush. You can use a half inch um, brush. I wouldn't go any smaller than this on this project. Half inch would be as small as I would go. You can use a 10 or a 12 flat. These are my go-to brushes now for floating. Or if you are lucky enough to have a curved flat, which this is a brush that is discontinued, this would be my number one option for floating. But um, and then I would m move to for me a flat brush, but a lot of people like to float with angle brushes So I want you to use the brush that you like to use the best These are the options that I am showing you so that you can choose what you would like to use I'm going to use the curved flat now this brush is no longer available. It's discontinued by the manufacturer But it's a wonderful brush. I've really taught a lot of people how to float with this brush so if you have one, I definitely recommend that you use it or practice with it. So we're going to put out some lamp black. And I have spritzed my palette with water over here. This is my clean water that I go to when I need water in my brush to float. I load my brush, dip the toe or the pointed edge. If you're using a flat brush, either side of the, the brush will work, either corner. You just want to make sure one corner goes into the paint. So I'm just going to load back and forth like this. I've got water in my brush, so the water in my brush is going to help that paint load into the brush, and it's also going to soften the paint. Okay, so we want to start adding some dark areas into our boots here. So I touch, I always touch my brush, the tip of my brush, to my paper towel before I go to my project, just in case there's a little bit more on the tip than what I want to lay down. So I'm kind of in a tight area. I'm using a 12. I could go down to a 10 here. And I'm going to go around the tongue here. Push the paint down in there because that's a V. Kind of round it out. And then go inside the boot here. Okay, and we can use a mop brush to soften that if we need to in the water edge. I'm going to kind of smooth that out a little bit. I feel like i got a really, really hard line there. So I think I'm going to move down to 10 flat real quick because, or a, a 10 curved flat. Because I've got some smaller areas here that I'm trying to go into and I don't want to completely fill them up. Remember to wake your brushes up before you use them by letting the bristles fill completely full of water. 
then taking it out of the water and laying each side of the brush on a dry paper towel to let it wick out the excess moisture out of the brush. And your brush is conditioned and ready to go for you. Okay, we're going to go on each side of this little hump here. I'm just going to pretend these are like steel toed boots because that's what my husband used to wear all the time with his work. Each side of it. Oops. All right, pick up some water, water drops on the water edge of my brush. I'm going to work it into my brush, same as I work my paint in. And pick, I picked up a little, little bit of paint and worked it in as well. I still had paint on my brush, but the water may have lightened it up a little bit more than what I wanted, so... Okay, let's continue on here with our shading. We're going to go around this boot here. Because this boot is behind this one, so we got to kind of put it there. I think... Um, get my pencil out here excuse my arm I think we're gonna make maybe a little bit of a wrinkle in the boot there and I don't know if I want to create another wrinkle this one can have a maybe a double wrinkle in it we'll see when I get over to it if I even want to do that but you know the boots are worn they're older this dad has just worn his boots well Okay, we're going to go along the sole here. All the way up to there. I'm going to very gently mop that. I don't feel like my float here is quite dark enough. I'm going to go underneath this little wrinkle that I put in here. And I think I'm going to go maybe a little bit along the back of the boot. Back here. I don't know when I get done, I might want to change that to a highlight, but right now I'm thinking it needs a little bit of a float. Okay, now I've drawn my circles in here, which as I paint over this, I will probably remove, but if you put yours on with graphite, you probably will not remove them. I want to go along the edge right here. I'm going to go back inside the boot here and redo this, because I feel like it needs to be much darker. Second little float of black there. Okay, so I've got paint in my mop brush, which we use dry. So I want to clean it. So I'm going to go to a wet place on my paper towel and remove that paint. And then find a dry spot and dry it off because I don't want any moisture in my paint. So now I've got it cleaned and ready to go. Okay, let me go along. Oh, wrong brush. Wrong brush. Let's go along the bottom edge of the sole. We may end up making the sole almost completely black by the time we're done here. Let's go over and put a little bit on our other boot as well. I might want to make some more wrinkles in some key places, maybe. So let's see. Now 
this is still with just lamp black work it into your brush to get it a nice soft color we don't want thick paint we don't want hardness no hard lines because if you get those hard lines in there then you're just going to have to uh, base coat and start over practice is key to being able to float well and using a brush large enough to fit the area is extremely important do not try to use a little bitty tiny like number two flat or a number four flat or even a number six flat to float unless you're floating on a very small project because you just cannot um, get your float wide enough you, the paint the brush won't hold enough water and it won't hold enough paint and you can't get anywhere and then you get frustrated and you end up just loading your brush full of paint instead of having paint and water which you have to have in your brush you load paint and water at the same time on your brush I think I'll flip this edge here make that a little darker while I'm here I'll just go ahead and go along the bottom of this sole And it's okay if you don't you, you don't get your float in one you have to reload and continue on that's perfectly fine there's barely a time when I don't have to especially in larger areas when I don't have to reload my brush and work that float some more okay now on on these on the tongue on the boots I really want that to be darker and I want it to be over a little bit farther. So lay your brush flat, soft pressure. And I'm just going to walk that paint over. And go in and soften gently. I'm going to, I'm going to, when it dries, I'm going to bring it over a little bit farther on that part of the tongue. So let's do this one. over quite as far as I want to walk over. Okay, that's probably dry enough. I can increase that a little bit. Working the water and the paint into my brush at the same time. So I want this area to walk over just a little bit lay the paint in I'm gonna mop the whole area because I already had paint there next to that edge of the boot and I really didn't want to get it too overpoweringly dark although I do like that so let's do that over here Okay, I want to go inside the boot here. That just needs to be way darker. So, let me get a fresh load of paint here. I washed my brush out, now I'm reloading nice fresh paint. Nice clean brush. Let's get this really dark in here. This is a V, so we want to push it down in there and round it. Pull it out. Go round and tuck it in there. Let's bring this dark back here a little bit. And we'll do the other boot. up on the tippy toe here because I don't want to make it any wider I just want it dark right there where that tongue is push that into that V 
bring it back here, darken it. This one will be dark a little bit farther up the boot because the opening's not as big as the opening here. Let's do this down here. This one. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush out and load it with some fresh black here. Load it for floating. We're still floating. We'll be, def be doing floating for a while. I want to put another crease in this sole. the way and I really want it dark down here at the edge of this sole. So let's do the other side. We're going to do a second line here. the heel. And the bottom edge down here. I'm kind of up on the, I've got my brush tilted up a little bit so I'm not laying it flat like I normally do. But I've still got that water in my brush so I'm being able to pull that paint just a little bit. Sorry about the alarm there. Had it set for something, not really sure what, so <laughs> I'm going to ignore it. Not really sure what that was set for. Okay, I'm going to go along this line here, like I did over there on that boot. I'm going to bring it up a little bit here. Not, not exactly where I had my line. Needed, needed that to come up just a little bit so that I could bring this line up. Okay, and let's put some out here on the sole. I think this edge needs to be darker, or this floating here needs to be a little bit darker. Clean my mop brush. You try and remember to clean it every time that you use it because it um, you can transfer paint where you don't want it on your project. Make those creases a little bit darker. Every place that we that we floated, we're probably going to have to repeat it once or twice to get it dark enough to be able to see on these gray boots. We really want to see our shadows. We don't want them to wash away in there. So after we add our highlights, if we still need to come back in here and do that, we can. So while we have our black here, we are going to paint in our holes for our eyelets, for our shoestrings. So, just make a circle. I'm sure we'll have to come back and paint these over because I want to put a highlight along this edge. So, you could wait to do it after we do the highlight. There's going to be some other stuff going on with these holes here, so try to make them all the same size, but I know that's very difficult sometimes unless you have a whole stencil that where you can make them all the same size. And I believe there's 10 
on each boot. I, I'm hoping there's 10 on each boot. So. Simple little hole or a simple little circle here. Okay, so that's got our holes for our shoestrings. Okay, so I'm going to erase some lines here as soon as I find my eraser. I want to erase these lines out here because I can see the edge of my boots now. Anything that you did not paint over, you can go ahead and erase. You know, it's over, over the boot there. So, any lines that you can erase, go ahead and erase them. If you've gotten paint on them, they will not erase, so just be prepared for that. Unless you've drawn them in completely with a dressmaker's pencil, which is what I use to draw on my designs with, because it will fade away with water or paint. But these lines out here are regular graphite lines with the graphite paper. Okay, we're getting some nice looking boots here. We're going to get ready to start adding some highlights now. Actually, before we add our highlights on here, I want to put some stitching on here. I'm trying to remember exactly what my husband's boots look like when he wore them. I'm sure he still has them in the closet somewhere, but I don't want to go dig them out. So I'm going to put some stitching following our eyelets, but don't put it right directly up against them because we still have to add some stuff to those eyelets, okay? So I'll go over here. I'm just using a one round brush. You can use a liner brush if you feel better using that, some kind of detail brush. I'm not going to worry if I ha don't have the same amount of stitch lines on each boot. Let's put some up around the top edge, which we might have to come back and redo because we haven't added a highlight on here yet. Sometimes I just get ahead of myself. And I think we'll put a little bit down here at the bottom. pretty good. So that's all of our black for now that we're going to put on there. Okay, let's start adding some highlights on here. Now, um, I'm going to use a really old worn brush. Um, that's what I recommend that you use. So if you've got an old brush, this size is a 12 of flat. So just use that for some dry brushing. I'm going to actually use it dry this time. So it's going to be more like dry rubbing. Dry brushing, your brush is usually damp, and then you um, get most of the moisture out, you load your brush with paint, you offload um, on a dry paper towel, um, some of the paint, but not all of it. And with dry rubbing, you load your brush dry, and then you offload a lot of the paint onto a dry paper towel. So, and usually you use a much rougher brush than what I'm using. So I'm going to load it with some desert turquoise. And I offloaded some. We'll see if that was too much or not. So I want to start adding some of this color into the boot. Just by gently tickling over the boot. And leaving some of this color. Letting it just end up where it ends up. I 
I'm up on that kind of chisel edge now, kind of scooting it along there. We can put a little bit back in here. This is what I meant by maybe we shouldn't put our stitching in because I knew I was going to be coming up here to the top and doing some stuff and going along this edge because we still got our bright highlight of white that we're going to put on here. Alright, I'm going to load again for the other boot. Offload over here. And I always start out with very soft pressure because I don't know how much paint will be coming off my brush. And this one had a little bit more paint in it than the other one, so it's not coming off quite as nicely as I would like. But Love this desert turquoise. Such a pretty color. And we'll go on up here, a little bit here. So that's a nice kind of worn a little effect there on our boots, and I really like it. I think we'll do the same thing with some of our rust color. Now, you if you're using the vintage effect wash use this red orange if you are not using it then use burnt orange and I am not going to clean my brush out I'm just going to wipe out as much of the paint as I can and then I'm gonna load in some I'm, I'm wiping it out on a dry brush by the way on a dry paper towel um, then I'm gonna load in some of the red orange here load my brush and offload over here and we'll put a little bit of this in here this is a much wetter paint so I'm gonna go right back here where I took it off We don't have to do a whole lot of this, so I don't feel like you need to do that. But I, I do want to see it. I don't want it to, to fade down in there, and I think it's still blending with the blue on my brush. So I'm going to work some more into my brush and try and work that blue out of it. And try and tickle some of that on here a little bit better. Maybe keep it more in the darker areas. I think that would look best. Pretty dirty. I like that. Alright, so now we're going to come in with our bright highlight. And again, here you can use the Vintage Effect Wash or the regular uh, just Snow White and the acrylic paint. So I'm going to clean my brush. I might grab another one, but I think I'm actually going to do the white with a damp brush. So I'll load my brush and I think actually I'm going to do a side load. Dry brush side load, see if I can. So I'm going to load it as I, as I would if I was going to float. I'm going to give this a shot and see how it works. 
work it into my brush. All right, I'm gonna offload and then see how well we can do with a dragging highlight. So I'm gonna have to definitely paint my eyelets back, eyelets and my threads back in. So let's put some of this up here on the tongue. You kind of want to retain our shape there. A little bit here on the tippy toe. Let's go down this edge of the tongue. I'm just kind of dragging that paint. I'm not um, overworking it. I'm not pushing hard on my brush at all. find that shape right there. Not that we'll see a whole lot of it after we put our shoestrings on there. And then I'm just going to barely tickle a little bit of this where some of the turquoise was. I don't want to cover up all my turquoise, but just put a little bit in there. Kind of scuff those boots up. We're making them antiquey looking, sort of. Alright, let's see about this one. I'm still using that old kind of worn brush, which is really helping me get that dragging effect because my bristles are all splayed out. They're, you know, it's it's a worn brush, so it's not I'm not getting, you know, those bright edges, those sharp crisp edges, which is exactly what I want. I want to keep this kind of messy and not perfect at all. front here. So let's just go down that edge and then a little bit here in my turquoise area. But don't cover up all your turquoise. It's extremely important. This is just a fun way to just create something looking so old and textured and worn. I just love the effect that this gives. Okay, I'm going to go back in and paint my eyelets back in. So I'm going to go off camera and do that. And then I'm going to come back in and add some shoestrings in here and see. I think some of my black I might need to darken in a couple places. So we'll do that. Okay, I do want to darken up a couple of areas of my black down here at the bottom of the sole. And I want this line to come back. So if you've lost that, try and put that back in. any place you feel like you've kind of lost your your shading. Just go ahead and put some of that black back in there. 
And we're going to get ready to work on the eyelets and get our shoestrings in. This is just cleaning up where maybe our, our highlight got into an area where we didn't quite need it to be. Okay, let's do our highlights now, or our eyelets. So how we're going to make those is with, we're going to have some uh, graphite out or lamp black, either one. We're going to make a light value gray. So I'm, my graphite's on its way, so I'm going to add some white to it and make almost like a gray sky. Maybe just slightly darker than a gray sky there. And we're going to go around our We don't have to go around the whole thing because our shoestring is going to cover up that side of it. So we'll just go around half of it with an eyelet here. And I'm just using a small round brush, a uh, number one round. So I can do it this direction. I'll make like a backward C. Makes it much easier. Okay, there is our metal parts around our eyelets. I'm going to go ahead and add a little highlight on each one. And this is just with some white. This is where you'll definitely want to be up on the tip if you're using a round brush or get a detail liner so you can make a nice line there and not go outside the uh, eyelid. You probably can't even see that there's two colors there, but there is two colors. I might come back and brighten that after we get the shoestrings in. We'll see how well we notice it after that. Just a little comma stroke on there. Okay. So that takes care of that. I might... Let me wide angle back out. Highlight our stitch lines a little bit. I'm missing a line there. started out a little bit thick with my paint, so I'm going to try and keep it a little bit thinner of a line. I think I have it on the opposite side on this one, so that's kind of weird looking. That's all right. Okay, we're going to add our shoestrings in here. And um, you can transfer the pattern on, but um, you can also do it like this. I'm going to show you how to um, do your... 
I think I'm about out of chalk here. Let me refill my chalk pencil. Let's see if I got another one over here I can use. Okay, so we're going to draw an X. So first I'm going to draw these lines that are going to go into our eyelid. Into our... And you can bring them up as far as you want. I think that's far enough for me. So then this this one here, let me start down here because that might make it easier. It's going to go over that way. Over. It's going to go over to meet that one. Okay, and then our um, shoestring here will actually go behind this one and come out. It's going to go there. It's going to come out here. And then we're going to have one that's going to go that direction. Okay, so let's do the same thing here. I think I'm only going to go up that far on this boot. So then it, we're almost like making V's here. Okay. So then this shoestring will be over here. And again, this shoestring will come out here. And you can have it go wherever you want it to go. Whatever shape or direction you want your shoestring to go, that's where you can make it go. Okay? So we're going to paint those in and we're going to use a one round and we're going to use some white paint. And you need to have a round brush that can flatten easily to turn it into a flat brush. So make sure your um, round brush has a good spring on it. I've got too much water in my brush, so I'm going to go remove that and load up. We want pretty much straight paint here. We don't want a lot of water in our brush. Okay, so then we're just going to start painting in our shoelaces. Straight from that hole to the edge, giving it some curve. We don't want to have our lines be super straight because it's curving around the boot. to there and so now I'm going to really load my brush up and I'm going to pull it from here and make my shoestring ran out of paint because this is a small brush and then I want to come to a point here create the, the point on the shoestring and then this one's going to come from around there. And it's going to just go behind the boot here. So we won't see the end of that shoestring. Okay, I know they look awful white for these dirty, yucky old boots, but we will make them look kind of worn here in a minute. to curve your shoestrings. Shape, follow, over the boot. Alright, let's pull this one out of this hole right here.
the shoestring. And then this one. one come up and we'll have that little tip on the shoestring. Okay. Those look pretty good and it should just take one coat I would think of the white um, because we can always go back and brighten those shoestrings. At, put our highlight, uh, highlight on there with white after we do our shading on them. So we've got to make sure they're completely dry. So I, I want them to get dry and I'm going to make sure there's no graphite line showing here for me. So I'm going to erase those back. So I think this one's probably dry. So I think I pretty much covered up most of my lines here. So I think I'm probably pretty good. Oops. See, the side wasn't dry. use my, my damp brush should remove any graphite lines. I don't really see any there so I think I'm good. Okay we're going to start some shading here. And you're going to want a small brush so I think I'm going to go down and use a flat brush maybe. We're going to shade with graphite. This is an 8 flat, so if you're using an angle brush, you'll probably want to go down to a quarter inch angle brush, which I don't think I have one. Oh yeah, I do. A quarter inch size angle brush, because we're, we're going into some small, tight areas here. So just load the corner of your brush. I wouldn't, I would say not to ever float with anything smaller than a quarter inch angle brush or an 8 flat because um, the the amount of bristles on the brush would just make it so difficult to get in your paint in there correctly without pretty much spreading it across your bristles. Okay, so we want we want this shoestring to come in on top, so I'm gonna put a shading right there. So that one looks like it's on top. Let me zoom you in here so you can really see what I'm doing. And then this one is going to be underneath here. See how it's already dirtied up the shoestrings? We've got to go out here and do this edge, and we got to do that edge. Okay? So the first thing we want to do is do this edge. Then we do this edge. Okay, then we can go out here. You want to make sure that you're dry. So if that's not quite dry, we can come out here and do all these outer edges and all these inner edges later. So let's just go up and continue here. We're going to make that one on top. So we'll just do that on all of them real quick. Need a drop of water. here and do this edge. Make sure you're on camera. To load my brush. Okay, so you, you can tell which shoestring is on top now. The brightest one is definitely on top, but uh, We'll, uh, we'll make them all have a little bit of a highlight here in a little bit. Okay, so inside here will be shaded right here. Need a little bit more paint. Okay, all these outer edges. You probably weren't even on camera for that. I did right there and right there. So now I'm doing all the outer edges with graphite.
You could use lamp black as well. But you'd have to make sure it's pretty sheer and doesn't take over your shoestrings. And then we have to do all, all of these in here and darken those. Just a little bit down here on this. Just I'm just kind of doing a hit and miss kind of put some on there. I don't want it to stay bright white. We want it to be a little bit, a little bit dirty of a shoestring. Not bright white. So just drag some of that on there. goes behind. It needs to be a little shaded too. Okay, let me wide angle out and you can kind of see that a little bit better. It still, still is pretty white, so I'm going to put a little bit more graphite on there. They wouldn't be quite that clean of a shoestring in these scuffy old boots. shoestrings look pretty good. So now we're going to do the exact same thing over here. So graphite on your brush. Okay, so this one is on top. Got a lot of paint on my brush here. So we want to put that one on top. It should have been the other way, but we're going with it now. Okay, then over here. And let's get our outer edges. here because that shoestring is coming from behind. And then do it next to our eyelets. And then dirty up your shoestrings. Okay, that looks pretty good. I like the way those shoestrings look. They look pretty good. Alright, let's add some shading underneath our boot here. And we're going to need black for that. Sitting here. Oops. All 
really dark back in there. This is just a float of lamp black. some water. Okay, that's pretty good for the shadow under there. Okay, so I'm going to wide angle out here because now we want to stick our paper on. And we're going to stick it right here. Now, you can adhere this any way that you want to if, um, you know, you are a scrapbooker and have ways that you would like to do it, then go for it. I'm going to get my decoupage for paper out. Decoupage for paper. Or just regular decoupage. Get me a good size brush here. So I'm going to take, I'm going to move this off my easel now. And I'm going to take my uh, paper. generous amount of this on the back of it. Okay, I'm going to move it over here. This up real quick, because I don't want my board to stick to it. And then get my board. And I know I'm going to be putting it down over here, so I'm going to put some of this over here. I don't remember how big it is. So I'm just going to guesstimate here, and my ceiling fan is on. It's already starting to dry this very quickly. So I'm going to put this on here, right there, I'm going to stick it down. Glue it down. I really want to make sure I've got good adhesion. I mean, you can have it raised up if you want it raised up. It's not going to hurt a thing. thing. Okay, we just want to make sure that this is down well on the edges and it feels like it is. So now that has got to dry and then we're going to finish up with our um, outer edge floating and we're going to float around this and I think it's going to be done. I'm getting a little bubble there, so let me push down on that. Push the bubbles out. If you if it's dry and it's got bubbles in it, just take a little um, pen, a uh, straight pen, a sewing pen, and uh, poke a hole in it, and then uh, dampen your finger and very gently push it down. But I think that's going to stick on there well. I hope I got it straight because I didn't even 
look to see how straight it was. I think it's straight enough. But, um, I love this design. I think it turned out really, really well. Okay, I'm going to get mine. Well, it's pretty dry. I might be able to go ahead and float around my outer edges here. So we want to use black. I'm just going to use a large filbert wash. You can use a flat wash, sponge, whatever you like to use to paint your edges on. And I'm going to go around the edge with some of my black. And just kind of darken that up and age it up and make it look super cool. Okay, that looks really nice. So now I want to, the last thing I want to do is do a little float around my paper here. Black. And then we'll let it dry. And we'll varnish it. And it will be gorgeous. What a fun little keepsake for a dad. This would be a great gift for a new dad. An old dad. Any age dad. Okay, I think I'm going to put just a tad bit more here on the paper itself. I feel like I lost some of that on there. dirty up the, the sign just a little bit more with what's left in my brush of that black. Okay, now I think that is going to be a complete design here. I think it turned out so cute, and it's a quick one that you can do really quick for a, a Father's Day gift. Um, you can do it on a canvas, you can do it on a box, you can do it on anything. Um, but I really like it on this panel, and then I can just stick it in an easel and place it wherever. So I hope that you enjoyed painting this with me. I Oh, I see one thing I didn't do before we go off camera here. I need to put a little bit of a shadow under my shoestrings here. On the boots especially. Okay, I think that's much better. Now I think it can be finished. I think we'll call this a...
done project. I changed my mind. I want to do a little bit out here. Okay, there we go. I think that is going to be a finished project. And I hope that you enjoyed it. And I'm going to see you guys on the next one. And if you're watching on my YouTube channel, please give me a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Thank you everyone who watched my videos. I truly appreciate you. See you on the next one.